Hi everyone, I'm Brian Garibaldi from Lake Cook Behavioral Health and we're going to talk today about what to expect when you come in for the first time in therapy. I'm Katie, I'm the office manager here and I'm kind of on the front lines. I, I take all the intake calls that come in and a lot of times people come in, call in and they've never been in therapy before and they're curious about what to expect or they're, they're nervous about um, what's gonna happen in therapy. Am I gonna get medication? Or am I gonna be hypnotized? <laughs> what goes on? What goes on? What goes on and, in therapy? And so I think that's something that's kind of important to, to talk about mm. and to shed some light on yeah. the process and what people can expect. So you get calls all the time, I'm sure a wide variety. She mm -hmm. handles not all the intakes, but calls coming in, sometimes referrals, sometimes just maybe just off the internet they find us. Right. So it's probably a wide variety of, some people have been in therapy, some people haven't. Right. So we're gonna go over a little kind of, I guess, what to expect, what's it like. And I first just for sure wanna just frame this in. Working with every therapist is so completely different. In fact, I don't know if it it's really has to do with the therapist's personality and style. So two therapists could be completely different. It's not even just educational difference. Again, it's so much about personality differences. Um, so I think that's like an important thing to know. Um, so I, where do we start about this? You know, no matter no matter who you see in your first session, the therapist will often do a lot of what we call taking histories or collecting information. Um, uh, usually in the first session, we might ask more questions than normal. I mean, some therapists still already know it's classic psychoanalysis is not going to probably be like this way. But we take a lot of history initially, so we have to cover a lot of bases. For example, we might ask a question about medical medical history. Um, if somebody has a thyroid issue, could that affect things? Or if they had a brain injury, you know, that could... Um, a lot of a lot of mental health diagnoses are um, are superseded by medical history. So that's just the thing. We ask a lot about histories. Um, but initially, when people come in, not only we want to know this background, but we want to know what they need help for and kind of what brought them in, maybe even why now did they come in, and really what's their experience, and the, the experience with them, why they came in, if that's too ambiguous or not. But I mean, we just want to know what's going on. I mean, I start with like, hey, I talked to you on the phone a little bit. But I like to start at the beginning. What can I help you with? And that's kind of how I start. And sometimes it's hard to get rolling sometimes, but like, um, yeah. I know sometimes when I have people on the phone, they it's hard for them to to put into a, just a few words what why they're they need therapy. Yeah. It's hard. For sometimes them it's to overwhelming, pin, maybe, a, or there's, right, a, lot there's a lot going on. Going on. And I think that's a good place to start. I think I think a therapist can really, um, through talk therapy, through going over things and talking about things, can really flush out and make clear, especially if somebody's coming in and they got to the point where they want to come in, can really start to make clear why they're here and what they want to work on and what their symptoms are and what they're struggling with. Almost exactly, exactly what are they struggling with, exactly how it impacts their life. And I think just talking through someone, a good therapist with experience, can really, really flush that out. And for people who are overwhelmed or I'm like, I'm just anxious, I'm not sure, even that step right there is like such a big deal, I think, just them starting to figure out what's going on with them. Um, but what's the experience like? Um, yeah, again, it, it so depends on the person. I, as a therapist myself, I'm very like... Um, I'm very interactive. You can probably just tell on video. Like I'm really interested in people's stories and how they got to where they are. And I'm interested in the details. Oh, what was that like? And and in their history. So that's my personal style. I'm pretty, pretty. I don't know if interactive is the right word. <laughs> um, but there's plenty of therapists that are probably way more mellow than me. More listen. Than more talk. listen. Uh, way more listen. Well, I, I like to think I listen tons, but like, <laughs> um, but. There's just different vibes. Some people are just like have well, we've way all seen more. Well, we that on TV where the mellow. therapist sits and just takes notes while the sits person the... talks, and and I don't know. It, I've it... been to therapists where they're just sitting in the back taking notes, like didn't talk all session, and it drove me crazy. That might be great for somebody who needs to just lay it out, but for me, I need like interaction. So like, there's so many varieties. It's almost like good to probably interview a therapist here. I don't know how many people actually do that. Well, I always tell people when they call in if if they don't feel like after a session or two, like it's the right it's fit. It's a good fit. We always talk about it. Not always talk, but some people are concerned about that. And I always say, yeah, it's really important to have a good rapport with them. And if you don't yeah. feel comfortable, it's not the right person. And you're never obligated to 
you know, to stay with that person. And we've got, you know, a lot of therapists in our practice. So yeah. we can always try and put them with somebody that might be better. Um, yeah, be better but, fit. I mean, yeah, people. But I want them to know that they're not stuck with, you know, one yeah. person if it's not the right. Because it's. They have they're to be hard. comfortable. Yeah. You have to be comfortable with your therapist. You got to be able to lay it out on the line. You got to. And in therapy, uh, clients have confidentiality. They We can't talk about outside what goes on in the therapy office. Somebody could call in and be like, is this person a client? We can't even, like, say people are here. We can't even say, like, right. any just, of that. We're like, like, we can't talk doctor. about people. It's yeah. totally... Um, so people have to be able to, like, lay it on the line here um, with some exceptions about hurting themselves and others, of course. We're getting too many details. But they need to be able to, right. like, really lay it out here. And so, um, like, the relationship with the therapist is critical. And being able to sit with the therapist and lay it out and go through stuff I mean, is super, super valuable. Um, again, I'm often going to look through the lens of like how I do therapy. So if I ever, it's always gonna, it's always going to be tainted. To, anything I talk about here is going to be tainted by how I do therapy. I just want to make that official here. <laughs> um, but just like our style about how we help people, um, like working with adults, I work with kids, is way different. So I'm not even going to talk about play or activity therapy right now. It's not in the scope of like this video here. But with adults, you're, you're talking with them. You might do other activities. You might do other things. If you have, if you have other skills like EMDR, you might incorporate that. But so much of it is talk therapy. Like, how does like talking help? And again, this is a little through my lens, but um, but there's there's I'm way into I was telling you before I'm way into the mechanism of how therapy helps, even just the process of verbalizing, getting your worries, for example, out and verbalizing them, having someone listen that in itself is useful having someone like kind of rephrase or someone summarize it back oh here's what i'm hearing from you sometimes that is can be hugely therapeutic believe it or not um i think there's all sorts of other things i like to i like to think i have a lot of good depth and different tools that i can use um you know i was, I was talking to katie earlier like what are we talking about here on this kind of thing that like like again i'm totally generalizing here super generalizing but in the old days, and even now, is that like, you know, initially with Freud, he's like the godfather of like uh, psychotherapy. There was a lot of what they call therapist expert where the, uh, a lot of an analysis would go on and they're kind of analyzing what you say and kind of making conclusions, stuff like that. But uh, modern therapists like Yalom is like, I was telling you, we're, we're like fellow travelers. We're walking together through your experiences and through your history um, as a therapist, we just have a lot of experience and knowledge that can walk you through a process. So that's like what I like to say. Not only can I be there with you in that, but I can walk you through a process that helps your anxiety, that helps your depression. And the process, following that process can really help symptoms and really, you know, make change in your life. So I don't know, does that make sense? Like mm -hmm. what goes on for a session? But, um, you know, for the therapist there's a lot of listening early on, taking histories and really getting a a hold of why you're coming in so you guys can go over stuff together okay so that's some first first session experience kind of stuff um if anyone has any questions on stuff you can contact us through lake hook behaviorals our website um, we prefer that actually through our for our web page so contact us there um thanks everyone